Hey, I'm Matt Hudgens, and he's Dave Mulvaney, and this is Profitability MD. Dave, how you doing today, buddy? Matt, I'm doing great. Episode 48, how are you? 48, holy smokes, I can't believe that. We are, uh, it's, it's surprising, and today we got a special guest, Chuck Gibson, who is a friend of mine, and he is also, I am going to say, he has been successful in a lot of areas. He's got a master's degree in film and video production. He's been a real estate investor since 2007, uh, a commissioned officer in the Army, uh, South Carolina Army National Guard. Chuck, did you retire from the Army as well? I did. So 30 years. As well. Thank you for your service. Yep. And uh, Chuck has spent a decade teaching university film production and screenwriting. And man, I'm just glad to have you on the show. Welcome, Chuck, to Profitability MD. Well, I'm glad to be here, and uh, let's uh, let's have a lively discussion. Well, that's good. good. So, um, Chuck, tell us a uh, uh, tell us what uh, uh, you how you use video production to help your clients get, get help them get clients. I mean, that's uh, we'll start with video production because I didn't introduce you also as a freelance copywriter trained by Ray Edwards himself as well. So, um, okay, so. Uh, one way to look at this, you know, I'm, a, I'm an old artillery officer, and in the, in the artillery, we talk about um, combat multipliers. And so, you know, when, when, the, when the frontline troops are up there, uh, they like to call in the artillery to, to basically do suppression and, and do some serious damage before they go in and they kind of, well, they do more than clean up, but, you know, uh, we're here for that purpose. And so they lean on these combat multipliers to, um, to leverage what they're trying to accomplish. And that's kind of how I see video. It's a, uh, it's a very flexible um, and useful medium. You can, you can do mass media with it, um, obviously television and things like that, um, and formal programming. But then you can be very adept with it. Just simply pick up your, pick up your smartphone and go run on Facebook. So it's very agile. It's a very flexible medium and you can do so much with it. And they always say a picture is worth a thousand words. So this is a thousand words at 30 frames a second or 24, whatever you're playing it at. But anyway, we won't get into the technical things. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. All I can see is there's three frames on my screen right now. And so that's three frames a second as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> gotcha. That's all I got. That's all I know. So, so the ability to, to, to bring a message um, to someone um, efficiently and quickly, and this is one of the things we'll talk about today, hopefully, is used to be film production, video production was very tedious, took a big studio. Um, some big companies had in-house, uh, you know, video departments, that sort of thing. But it was a big operation and no one single person could do everything. Now you literally have a, a small video production studio in your pocket, which is really amazing. And so to not leverage that is, is kind of dumb. You know, <laughs> so, but okay. the problem is a lot of people just, they don't know where to start. And um, it, it, there's so much to it. That they, they make it more complicated than it needs to be usually. And so really what I'm all about right now is trying to find people that want to leverage. I mean, everybody says now you should be using video and, and everybody nods their head, but most people still haven't gotten around to doing that. So because, because they've, they've never done it before and they need somebody to show them the way. And that's really kind of where I'm heading with, you know, my background. So where, if, if somebody doesn't know anything about video production, what, we're going to go right into it. What's the first thing they could do to get started in video production? What's the, you know, best advice you could give like to, to, okay. Where to start. Yeah. yeah where, where to start? Do you start. Tell us where to start. Well, first thing you do is you call me. <laughs> Good. I like that. Yes. <laughs> Because the first thing that really needs to happen is, as you guys do, I saw it on your, on your, your, your web, website, well, on the LinkedIn profile that I looked at, that you do a basic assessment and you find out where somebody is. It would not be a good idea if, if you know, I came at your company or your, uh, you know, whatever you do, service, product, whatever, and just tried to make a, a one size fits all to accomplish what your goals are. That would not be productive, but that's what a lot of, that's, that's kind of what's out there. And there's, you know, there are some agencies out there that are kind of expensive and, you know, you're going to pay a lot of money to get a, um, a custom fit, so to speak. 
Um, what I like to do is come in in a way that you don't really feel like I'm, I'm, I'm making, I'm coming and making a lot of waves and trying to, trying to disrupt your business. I come in quietly, almost in the back door. We sit down, I observe, we talk, or we can do this on online or whatever. And, and just like we would for copywriting, uh, David, we assess what their true need is. Sometimes customers ask for a thing, like say, I used to get these requests, we need a video. And they're just checking a block. You know, like the, the event video for their corporation at the end of the year. And they don't even know why they want it. It's just, that's what we just do. So I had a lot of that. So, so what I'm trying to do is, is say, okay, given that opportunity, what can we do with that? What, what kind of productivity can we build out of that opportunity? Let's talk about what some, some goals that you're trying to achieve and see if we can make that a worthwhile event. Right. Well, yeah, Sometimes, I was just thinking right off, right off the bat, uh, Chuck, I was saying, what is the purpose of video? And you're saying there, there are multiple purposes. Like, like I would view it, you could have a video that would create leads, lead opportunity, right? So that might be a purpose of a video, right? You might have video that helps you with your conversions. Hey, I right. want this to help, help me, them get to know me so it helps me convert my business. Then you were saying you could have like a, a what'd you say, uh, end of the year party and it was more like- It's like an event. Event? Okay. Sometimes a kickoff video for an event you're getting ready okay. to have or an end of the year video. Okay, yeah. and that might be another purpose. Is that right. what you're saying? We're gonna determine which one of these three or four purposes you're trying to generate the uh, video for, right? Right. And on the other end of the extreme is, you know, the, the single solopreneur that has no equipment and no time. They're wearing all of the hats. Right. I'm looking down because your, your picture is down here <laughs> and the lens is up here. <laughs> but anyway. It's um, not so, audio. So, we put it out there on audio anyway. So. Yeah. So they're, so, so they're, um, they're wearing all the hats. Now, I'm, let me just tell you a little quick story, a little anecdotal story. I was teaching film and video production in a university setting. I was teaching fundamentals of motion picture and video production, and I was teaching screenwriting. And then we were in production also, so I was always working on a film or some audiovisual type of thing in the department. And it was a great opportunity, but I was also in the military. I was in the National Guard on the side. I was an artillery officer. Got a phone call one day, and it was a, a major in a public affairs detachment here in South Carolina that wanted me to come and be in, in his, um, they called it a PAD, a public affairs detachment is what it stands for. And um, it was, a, they were standing it up, it was kind of new, and it was a captain slot. I was a first lieutenant at the time. I was like, you know, that sounds interesting, because it was, he wanted me to become the broadcast officer, and I was a film purist, so that was kind of a, a mental uh, leap at the time to, to go towards video because we used to have t-shirts that say, just say no to video um, <laughs> because we were, we were auteur film theory kind of guys. Sure, sure. And so long story short, um, I did do that. I made that career change. It seemed hard at that point because to make a military career shift is a big deal. Um, you know, as far as getting promoted and all that, but it turned out to be great for me because I got to travel all over the world documenting our soldiers and airmen and, you know, I got involved in Desert Storm and we were over there pulling the Kurds down out of the mountains and flying in Black Hawk helicopters and all that. But the point I'm making is that I, I was wearing all the hats then. I was, I was not only taking care of my military gear and taking care of me, but I had to have my camera gear ready, my, my audio stuff, you know, working, um, batteries charged, and keep track of all that stuff while you're on the shoot and take care of the media while I was out there. And so then I'd have to come back, edit, and, and provide it to them. The reason that's valuable is because now, because I've done it, I've, I've done the production style, studio style shooting, all the way to the extreme of doing you know that for a, for an, a company or, or an entity that South Carolina Military Department eventually hired me full time for about 10 or 12 years to be their marketing guy for the South Carolina military department. And I got to do neat stuff like fly over the opening of the South Carolina Coliseum and, you know, shoot video. And, and when we had guys rappelling down out of the, out of the rafters for that and, you know, a lot of neat stuff. Now I know what's involved. I know the whole scale. So when I come into your place, I can say, not only 
do you need this, but I can advise you about what's realistic. Is this really, is what you're asking for really doable with the budget you have? Right, right. You know, or, you know what, you guys don't really need a video. What you need is a, and then I would propose maybe something different than a video. Because so you, sometimes that's not the right solution. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I, that's kind of a long story, but I, I, I hope that's valuable. Just to, that background gives me perspective to be able to give, I think, pretty good advice. Well, yeah, and you, uh, but you said something there. You said wearing all the hats, and Matt and I harp on this all the time, how entrepreneurs have a tendency, even with, when they have employees, to wear all the hats, to do all the work, and that is – suicide for any business owner and certainly a, a person who knows nothing about video probably shouldn't be you know there, there's gurus out there who say just pick up your smartphone and start filming and i've done it a lot and you can tell that's yeah. the difference right chuck that's what you're saying is if you want to do that video that's okay but if you want something good you call you right yeah well see that's what we have to identify is the array of marketing opportunities requires different products, different styles of things. For example, let's say that you're, you and your company, let's say with, I don't, I don't know if you're still doing the LED. Are you doing the yeah, LED? Yep, still company? have an LED company. So, so you're trying to uh, represent your LED company um, with a certain kind of image. Well, you want a certain amount of spit and polish on that, so to speak. A certain level of, I'm not saying corporate, but, but you want a kind of a corporate yeah, sophistication. look. Sophistication. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're yeah. not going to get that you know, hand holding a, a smartphone, right? right? But with you as the CEO, see now in today's world, everybody wants, here's what they want. They want transparency and authenticity. And they want to know who you are in order whether to decide whether they're going to do business with you because they've got lots of options. And that's where this comes into play. This smartphone is I can pick it up and I can say, hey, I'm out here with so-and-so we're doing such and such. And they get to see you kind of in, I mean, it's the next best thing to come in and sitting with you personally and, and over, you know, a drink and, and, and chatting with you. And so we get to have a window into who you are as a person that goes a long way towards building relationships. So you need to, you need to do both. Sure. Sure. The, uh, all right, Chuck. So give us some examples of using video. Uh, a lot of our guys are going to be, you know, smaller business owners, right? So, so, um, how do we use a video to generate leads? How do we do a video to generate conversions? Give us a couple examples. You certainly you've had a couple examples. Yeah. So let's say you go to a website, let's say you're on LinkedIn and, and somebody has got an ad there. Hmm, LEDs, you know, I'm, I'm looking on a click on that and I could go to a landing page that just has copy on it and they work, but if it has video on it, I'm probably going to click on the video because we're lazy and we'd just rather click on the video and let it do its thing. Now, sometimes we'll see how long it's going to be. And there's things about that that we have to be careful about, but generally I will click the video on and then maybe I'll start scanning the text while I'm listening to it. So, uh, VSLs, video sales letters, you know, All right, can, or, can you or pause there for a moment? Pages. Cause I got yes. like three questions on what you do. So, okay. <laughs> when you were at length of video, I was like, Oh wait, wait, wait. T tell us what's like on a landing page, what's the right length of video? And then I have one more follow-up after that. You yeah. Okay. So if it's a landing page, you want it fairly short, but long enough, it's just like copy, long copy versus short copy that, that argument long enough to, to, to do what you want to get them to do what you want them to do. Right. So context is everything. It, it, there's no right answer to that. Okay. The uh, venue matters. If you're, if you're in a certain channel, like, like Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, you know, you're not on your website yet, but you're out on one of these other channels. Those have certain protocols that you have to pay attention to. And not only, not only the length, but the, the, the aspect ratio, the orientation, by the way, did you say this is just going to be a podcast audio? There's no video or will no, we have video? video? There's okay, video. So if I use my hands well. and you know, yeah, okay, everybody. it's worth doing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, so, so, Sometimes you, like if you're on Facebook, you always want to have your phone oriented this way, portrait, okay? Yeah. If you're on YouTube, you want to be landscape. If you're on Instagram, you want actually half of, you want, you want half of, you want it square because okay. the top half you're generally going to use for text. 
so there's there's all these things to think about from the format you have to learn this stuff so but, the text part it, uh, you yeah. said okay so like somebody lands on a video um and then you said but why they're watching the video sometimes they scan the text so yeah. is it better to have the text the what do they call it like closed caption on the bottom of video of a video is that is that an important aspect okay of so if they're scanning the video is going to do one of two things it's going to either disappear or in some cases on in certain certain spaces the video will minimize it a little bit it'll stay in the upper maybe right corner of the frame while you're scanning so there's there's different coding things you can do to make that happen but generally speaking to your question about closed captions if they're scanning the page that is the closed captions in effect you're not looking at the video anymore so that's pointless but if they're sitting there looking at the video but maybe they're in a and that's a good question you've asked if they're in a um let's say a corporate meeting you know not yours david but or matthew but but somebody else's we don't know, have corporate meetings. and and they've got their they've got their phone turned on but the audio's down so the only thing they're going to get is and if there's nothing else there, there's no text or anything, then, then they're, they're going to click off of you. You've lost your opportunity because you've only allowed one means of communication. You do want to put closed caption or a fairly frequent series of subtitles on the, on the page to keep them interested. And especially in those cases, a talking head just isn't going to cut it. Like this, what, what we're looking at right now, this isn't going to cut. It's not going to keep their interest. So like I say, context matters. Uh, we'd have to parse that a lot more to really answer that question fully. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, here, can I, let me, I did this for one of my clients and you tell me how to make it, how to improve it. Okay. Okay. So, so a guy who does, uh, uh, it's just time of year, eight, uh, October, November, our Medicare, uh, time to redo your Medicare plans. Okay. Apparently I don't know this. He knows this. There are like five, 10 different reasons why you should do that. Right. So I shot a little video of him, did one of these uh, um, Zoom calls, made a little, hey, tell me the five reasons you should look at your Medicare supplemental plan every single year. And of course, he knows his stuff. He can rattle it off, right? Mm -hmm. Took that video. I made it into, you know, the five bullet points, mm -hmm. right? And then I sent that to all my clients, all my, uh, I have some elderly clients who are in uh, Medicare. And, and it's How did you send it? So I sent it in a email with the, um, picture with the video embedded in the email. Okay. okay. So I sent that to all my clients. Then I told him, we put this up on a YouTube channel that he could create. Actually, I created the same email for him. Here are mm -hmm. the five reasons why you should update and that he could send his own video email letter to all his clients and prospects and, and use it as a conversion tool or a lead generation tool. Hey, I didn't even know I should be updating my uh, Medicare supplement or Medicare. So we did that uh, just beginning of the month, beginning of the month. And uh, anyway, tell me what you think about that. How do you improve that? What do you like? What, do you what don't was like? the result? What was the result of that? Huge. His business is like double this month. <laughs> so, so you got positive feedback from that? Yes. Yes. So okay, what was the nature of the feedback? So he got more business, which equals more money. Okay. But what did he give any specifics on how, how, how people responded to it? Did you get any, See, what I would do is I'd talk to him and I'd say, okay, tell me about how people responded to it. Because you're talking about improving now, right? Yeah, sure. I'm you did you, the yeah, first thing right. Yeah. Okay, this is the 80-20 principle at work. Yeah. You got it out there. Yep. It might have been a 20% a, a solution, you know. Right, right, right. right. It, it, got, it got a result, okay? And so now we're talking about optimizing that, yep. that yes. activity. Which is yeah, how would a you continuous make it thing you do, right? Yes. So first of all, you start you start gathering data. This is this is the this is the balance between the art of marketing and the, the science of marketing, and both need to come into play. So you say, okay, well, how many responded? Okay, so did they all respond? How many responded out of how many you sent? So you can track that. You can do follow-ups with either the same video or with different subheadings, things like that. Now, did you put the link or did you actually embed the video in the email? Yes, I actually did both. Okay. And then so, I sent it three times to my clients. I sent the same video, the same email with a little different caption three times because I did get my own little drip email sequence. Yeah. So, so I would probably change the heading on every single one of those in the okay. email, things like yep. that. I would also consider 
you know, make sure you're segmenting your market properly so that you are, if I'm doing three, if I'm doing, okay. So every, every, this is, we're getting the major marketing topic here now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so you have to, you here. have to segment your market and you have to have a sequence of drips to each market. So, right. you, so that's, that's part of the campaign, right? Yep. So make sure you're doing all of that. I would put the video, I would host it like on YouTube or Vimeo or one of these websites so that yep. the, the, the burden of the email itself is not having to carry the data. Yes. I so, so that you don't get held back from that. So you get more, more, yep. more delivery deliveries. And from there, it's a matter of, you know, typical tracking the results and, and saying, okay, do you have any questions? Then follow-up videos can be created to answer follow-up questions. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I like it's basic, it's basic marketing, really. It's just, it, the biggest thing is that you did it. And that's what I'm <laughs> yeah. trying to get people to start doing is it's just, they, they make it way too hard. And, and sometimes to be frank, I thought you were, Sure. You can overwhelm people with way too much. I probably have said way too much already today. No, it, it, it no, no, good. overwhelming. I was going to say, what if you're like two coaches and you have this podcast and a video? How, how would you use this stuff? Your two coaches? Yeah, like us. Well, like you guys. guys the top of the we you are using video. video. We're on. We're using video right now. Yeah, we. Yeah. Uh, but what we you're not better? doing, maybe I don't know if you're doing this. Are you marketing your podcast with video? Yes. Or the or this thing. Okay, yeah, where, how are you doing that? Yeah, just to kind of put this in perspective, Chuck, this has been a journey. Matt and I started talking almost a year ago. So we're episode 48. So we've talked every week on Wednesday, and we talk about how to market your products, how to build wealth with your company. And so uh, Matt and I have had success like you in other areas for a long period of time. And so mm -hmm. we use this show and, and let people see our transition from, like, I guess you'd say normal entrepreneurs to the coaching world. And that's what this show is really about is this transition because we're still in the other world because that's where we make our money. But, um, and that's why you're on here is because you're, you're, you know, in film production and, but what, what we've literally just the profitability MD website will be going up hopefully by the end of next week. So we're, um, we are on, I, uh, what do you call iTunes, right? Matter. Uh, and um, Stitcher and you know and some of those but we're relatively new our podcast has only been up like a month so yeah so that's the podcast right so yeah we have a YouTube channel and we have a podcast and we're about to launch our website so this is uh, we've been practicing for 48 weeks I guess you'd say so if you're gonna really do video comprehensively you're gonna have video everywhere people go okay from the beginning to in the ad Okay, you can have a video that's an ad. So let's let's look at the whole process. The first part of this, which we've really kind of skipped over, is where you got to start is in your messaging. Okay, that's what that's what Matt's talking about with the lead generation. Yeah. So oh, yeah. if you want if you want to use video for lead generation, then you design video around lead generation, and then you figure out where you're going to go. You're going to go on LinkedIn. You're going to go on Facebook. You're going to you know what's the what's the pond you're fishing in. So you have to choose those things and, and tailor the video for that, that market. Yeah, you got to, right? you got to pick your target market. Yep. Yeah. So, so you, you know what your avatar, you know, kind of person is, maybe it's a person like us, a lot like us. And so I, I would look at something like LinkedIn. LinkedIn is really growing right now. You guys, if you're not, if you're not starting to market on LinkedIn, I'm actually turning to, to it now myself. Well, Matt, Matt and I are, are pretty good sized following between the two of us we got over 5,000 connections on LinkedIn probably over 6,000 I've got three so I mean well, I've got like five or six yeah. but but that, let me back up Chuck you said okay. something there and I want to pause you because this is about you who is your ideal client who who is the, the person that would be a home run for you who's your perfect so, yeah so there's two ways to kind of go at this I, I, I've been in some conversations about this quite a bit lately you can identify the market where the need is and create a product for the need. That's one approach. And that's often the recommended approach. Okay. And then there's the sort of Seth Godin approach is, you know, you create the thing, you're the artist and you create the thing. And then you, you go and find people and say, here, I made this for you. And if people aren't interested then well, it wasn't for them. And that's, that's how Seth is. I'm kind of, 
attacking this from both ends. I obviously can, I can do pretty much any kind of video. I can do a full, full blown feature film, you know, if I wanted to, all the way down to um, a six second Facebook story. Right, right. And everything in between. So where's the market? So I have to do that research. And that's what I should do is I should just say, well, who needs me? And then I should build products around that. So here's where I'm heading. Okay. Just so you know, I'm heading to towards workshops, two kinds of workshops. One is where you come to me, you get away from your business and it's a three day workshop. The first day is all about your messaging. The second day is all about your on camera presentation. We get into you on the first half of the day, second half of the day, it's about the equipment, but it's fairly light on equipment. Okay. Just, just so you know. So the first day we hammer out your message, second day you, you can, you're ready to talk to the camera. So we talk right. about how you do that. And then the third day is all about your different marketing channels. I think that if we can do this with people like yourself, then they can go back to their company. And the other thing that we accomplish while we're there is how do you train somebody inside your company to, to wear the hats so right. you don't have to. Yeah, champion. Well, and what are and what are the resources out there that you can leverage to get your message done quickly, to get to to go on camera quickly and efficiently, like ha have a setup, a standard setup that you just literally walk up to, flip on a light, the camera's there, you turn it on, and it boom, it's ready, you can do it to supplement your the stuff you're gonna do on the fly when you're walking I, around I with got your my smartphone. studio over there. You guys There's see? his background right that's there. That's exactly right. I, see, I that's, have a, because the reason we don't do some of this stuff is because we there's too many steps involved and you right. guys are all about systems i know this if you don't create a system for this it's not going to happen yeah you've yeah. got to create a system for your messaging for your going on camera and for your getting pushing it out and that's where we get into stuff like co-schedule and some of these different um um platforms hubspot um there's a bunch of them out there that will help you calendar your your messaging so, so that's, that's, that's one thing. The other thing is I come to you and, and, and we sit down and we, we do it where you are. So let's, let me move back on something there. You said um, the two types, you know, create a product for the need or create a product for the art basically is the way I took it. And I like calling it create it for the art, but, um, and I'm, I'm asking now, wouldn't it be better for you instead of, um, finding out who needs your services, but for you to pick who you want as a client and then you simply target them. Okay. So yes and no. <laughs> okay. Yes. Because that's obviously who I'd prefer to work with, but right. no, if the market's not big enough. Right. Well, so, so like, you, so, so we, so again, Seth talks about smallest viable market. Yeah. yeah well, if I can find the smallest viable market to do that. Then yes, you're absolutely right. I would pick my ideal avatar to work with and I would go after them. And that's really, yeah, that's what I, I, in step one, I've got seven pillar system and Matt and I have, <laughs> but yeah. step one is uh, you got to have, you got to generate leads, but you have to have a market segment that is big enough and it's worth going after. But um, just because, you know, I, I always say this, I've been in the electrical industry for, well, 20 plus years. And we'll just leave it at that. There are billions of light switches sold every year, but I don't want to sell light switches because there's no money in them. So your market that you pick has to be small enough and they has to be with people who have money. I believe that's, that those are the two things and are willing to spend that money in a profitable sense in your, in your market sector. That's step one. I mean, that of any business plan is who is, who is the people that you want to have as customers? Yeah. Well, here's, here's, there's another part to this. There's where's the gap. Right. Right. Because wh what we're really trying to do anytime we sell a service or a product is we're trying to meet a need. Solve a problem. Yeah. And what I see the need to me, it's plain as a nose on my face. To me, the obvious need is there is there are very few soup nuts to soup, I guess they say, systems whereby if you had it, 
you you could you could know that you could confidently and systematically have your video marketing working day to day and yeah. so my my avatar i guess is mm, companies that are big enough they've got some employees that they can afford to train up or they can hire some like i i would I would make certain certain recommend recommendations to you how to tap into local colleges uh, for doing internships. Right. Yeah. I saw that on your LinkedIn profile. Yeah. That's a good idea. Um, there, there are things that you can do to, I mean, these young kids, they love doing this stuff and all you got to do practically some of the time is give them some pizza and a place to sit, you know, <laughs> and they, and they want to show you what they can do. Now, I, obviously I believe you should do more than that when you can, but often it can, we've got one down in my brother's place. He, they just hired and he's, he says, I love what I'm doing. They finally hired him on full time, but he, they, we tested him first. Yeah. And yeah. He's going gangbusters. So, well, so how to, how to give a, a, an entrepreneur ideas about how to establish a way forward to have their video marketing working is really what I'm all about. Right. Okay. Right. So well, that's what I, think. I would say like the niche, the niche is video marketing for small business owners, right? Yes. And, and so I would tell you, you know, our advice is usually you pick one niche at a time, right? Yeah. So you could pick chiropractors, right? Yeah. And I'm going to put together a video marketing package for chiropractors. And then I'm going to dominate that. We're going to have results and we'll have return on investment. And I'll be able to show other people how well it's worked. Yeah. Then once I've got that channel working, then I could do video marketing for dentists. And then I could do video marketing for veterinarians, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, so like we tell people, we pick one niche at a time and just, down, you could do video marketing for coaches. You know, here Dave yeah. and I are coaches. Yeah. Put together a video pro program for, for me and Dave on how to market our coaching business. And then you sell it to other coaches. And then once you got that just rolling, then you roll it out to chiropractor second. Well, it's funny so, you say that because I was just talking to my wife about this. And I said, you know, I want to do four big workshops a year right um well actually that's not true i've got two locations and i want to do four at each location so that's really eight okay so right. so and i wanted to okay so the first one i want to identify is the real estate market real estate agents and you know to some extent real estate investors anybody that's dealing with real sure. estate yeah. that would include and could include everything from mortgage brokers you know, and all the professionals that are in that circle. Okay. You know why? Because we bring them into a small group setting and I'm thinking literally only 10 or 12 people at a time because yep. I'm given a lot of hands-on. This is not like a big room setting. This is hands-on is they, they know each other's lingo and language. They can talk to each other. And then the second one I, I identified was medical, the medical field. Okay. So this could be doctors, hand therapists, you know, occupational, uh, yeah, physical therapy. Things like that. Physical, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the third one was coaches and consultants because that's more of a service kind of thing. Right. And, and then the fourth one I had was um, the trades, carpenters, painters, uh, you know, people like that. So I've right. kind of identified those four groups because to, to me, they kind of clump together. Yes. And yeah. the, the kinds of examples that I can use in the, you know, in the quote unquote classroom, um, I can tailor towards, you know, yeah what, what they resonate with how does that sound that what sounds awesome what is a all right so let's say it's a three-day workshop for real estate agents and mortgage brokers and uh, what is what are you thinking about charging for somebody like that and what are they going to walk away with what's their deliverable i'm going to come okay. to this workshop yeah. i'm a real estate agent and i'm gonna how much does it cost me and then what am i walking away with what's my deliverable your deliverable my result you know price is always a thing um i i had sort of tar i i'm starting right at five thousand for three days um, what, do they get, what, do they get for, what do they get for 5,000? We're, we're coming up on time. So we're trying yeah. to, what they get, what they get is they get their message. They walk away with their message yeah. for at least a video that they can do. They get to choose whether they want it to be a general company message or they want, you know, we can talk about the different types of messages, but the point is they sure. get a message yeah. recorded with coaching at the event and they know where, what to do with it when they leave. They, they have a path forward to knowing how to get it out there and get it working and get it, getting it functioning. So whether it goes on a landing page or at, you know, on Facebook or all of those, you know, they would, they would know how to do that or how to find out, make sure they, cause they're going to get some things to take away with them. 
So well, where's the best place? I remember everything in their head. That's all right. So that, uh, Chuck, where's the best place that people can find you? Right now, because I'm still uh, building out the landing page, let's just use my LinkedIn profile, which is Charles Gibson, but I, I guess I need something more than just Charles Gibson. It's action. Um, uh, yeah, it's. Um, action it's, step. Uh, action step. You can find them at action steps. You can even search under action steps or Charles Gibson. And um, now if you like this show, subscribe to this channel. Matt, where can, where can we find you? Yeah, so I'm over at uh, LinkedIn as well. So that's always good. Matt Hudgens over at LinkedIn. And then my coaching website is 10xprofitblueprint.com. I got some good videos on there. Chuck, you'd appreciate that. Little videos on three marketing mistakes and, and how to avoid them. So that's probably cool. my little uh, funnel. How and about you, you David? You can find this show on um, iTunes under Profitability MD. You can find me at davidmulvaney.com. You can connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, any place that social media is played. So, and YouTube, this, this prod broadcast is also Profitability MD on YouTube. On YouTube as well. We, that's where most of the... Um, All these videos lie. So you can yeah. see our beautiful faces. And Chuck. With yeah, the, with Chuck, his that was awesome, man. You covered so much. And here's the thing. If you want to connect with Chuck, here's what you're going to get. You're going to get your message completed, a uh, recorded video with coaching, um, and then he's going to show you how to launch your business by using copywriting, build lang landing pages and all that. I highly recommend you connect with Chuck and guys, we will talk soon. Thanks. Cool. See ya. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity, guys. Appreciate it. Take care.